Hello, this is the second of a two-part video on general factorials. And this is a short video which is really a case study, but it raises a lot of interesting issues about general factorial experiments and the analyses. And this is a an experiment being conducted on shrimp farming. So there are three factors, water temperature at two levels, shrimp density at two levels, and water salinity at three levels. So we would say this is a two by two by three factorial. There are 12 unique treatment combinations and three replicates for each combination for a total of 36 trials in the experiment. And the response of interest is in is in the weight gain of shrimp in each of the 36 tanks after four weeks of growth. Okay, so this is kind of an interesting design. I'm not sure why uh, water salinity is at three levels and the other um, are at two levels, but overall I think it would be uh, have been very interesting as an experiment where each were each of the factors were at three levels, but we're going to deal with that later in the course. Okay. Okay. So how could we analyze the experiment? So let me just go over to jump. And this is the data. And there are a number of approaches we could take. Uh, the original case study, which uses an old convention, uh, where we treat even continuous factors as nominal and do traditional ANOVA. But what I think you'll find out, if we treat all three factors as continuous variables, which they really are, we can actually extract further inf um, information. So I'm going to go to Fit Model. And I'm going to begin by just fitting a full factorial experiment. So I have three factors full factorial, so it gives me the main effects, all two-way interactions, and a three-way, and weight gain is the response. And under emphasis, I'm going to switch to effect screening. So I'm going to run the analysis. By the way, notice in the actual by predicted plot, a lot of the points, especially uh, four or five of them, do not fit well. In other words, there appears to be a lot of lack of fit. We might be tempted to call at least uh, four or five of these points outliers, but it may be our model just doesn't fit this data very well. So let's take a look at the model overall. And notice that there's a three-way interaction that doesn't appear to be significant and a two-way interaction. But later on, we're going to study what's called lack of fit. Basically, this is a formal test of how well the model fits the data. And an F test of fit is done, and a small p value indicates a lot of lack of fit. So, what this is saying is this model really is not fitting the data well. And again, take a close look at this picture in actual by predicted. In fact, what might be going on here is a lot of nonlinear effects we're not going, we're just not capturing. So I'm going to go back to the fit model window, hit recall, and I'm going to add a additional term. Remember, when we look at the data, salinity is measured at three levels. So potentially we could look at a quadratic effect in dense, um, I'm sorry, salinity, not density. So I'm going to add salinity, okay. And under where it says polynomial, and this is degree two, I'm going to add salinity squared. So I run the model. Okay. Notice it actually looks like it fits a little better. Okay. Okay, so we look, salinity squared appears to be very significant. 
Okay. But we take a look. Salinity does appear to have a, a quadratic effect. But is it possible that the quadratic effect salinity might itself change over the levels of density and temperature? So I'm just changing the levels of density and temperature. Notice the quadratic behavior of salinity is changing. So maybe we need to add one more term to this. What if the curvature in salinity interacts with the other factors? And this is entirely possible. It's not commonly studied. Perhaps it should be. But why not a quadratic bilinear interaction? In other words, the curvature in the response surface with respect to one factor changes with another. So again, I will open up fit model. Okay, I'm going to hit recall. And I'm going to have a, a salinity by temperature interaction. These are not standard. And I suspect more and more often we should look at these in a lot of dynamic systems. In other words, the curvature itself in one variable uh, may actually depend on another. So notice, all of a sudden, once I add that term, the fit looks a lot better. Notice the lack of fit test no longer rejects. And these terms appear to be highly significant. Salinity squared and the interaction. Okay. So what it's telling us is, yes, there is a salinity effect. But notice if we run at warmer weather temperature, the salinity effect is almost linear. And if we run at low temperature, it's quadratic. And we could even try to take a look under factor profiling. And let's take a look at the interaction plots. And indeed, you can really see it if you look at the upper right-hand corner. Salinity is, is on the x-axis. And then you see there are two temperature effects. And indeed, at low temperature, salinity appears linear and at high temperature, so I said that backwards, at high temperature linear, at low temperature quadratic. Okay, And let's see if we can bring up a three-dimensional view. The factor profiling. Let's look at surface profiler. And what I'm going to look at is salinity and temperature. So take a good look at this plot. And what you'll see, you know, it may be hard for you to recognize it. Okay. Notice if we are at okay, low temperature. Notice that the salinity has a really um, quadratic shape. But if we turn around, we're now at high temperature. Salinity has an almost linear effect. So notice this response surface, basically a representation of our model, has compound curvature. And that's exactly what this model is telling us. So if we wanted to maximize weight gain, which you probably would in shrimp farming, okay, basically we'd have to consider what temperature to use, because that's going to affect salinity, and what shrimp density. And later on, we're going to use what's called desirability okay, to figure out the optimum settings. So I'm going to go ahead and maximize. And here's what it says. Use low temperature, low density, and run at high salinity. And I've actually been told by people who know something about shrimp farming that those results make a lot of sense. But the basic idea is just to show you an interesting case study. Okay. And you can read through it on your own. <clears throat> but it shows you in most of these physical systems when the relationships 
between the variables in the response can be nonlinear. There can be significant two-way interactions. There can even be three-way interactions. And we, when possible, should even be looking at quadratic bilinear interactions, meaning the curvature in the response due to one factor may change dramatically. So the quadratic effect in salinity is pronounced at low temperature, but it tends to disappear at high temperature. So I found this an interesting case study, and I thought I would show it to you. And there on slide 42 is a display of the response surface. Okay. And you can see that the relationship of temperature and salinity is hardly simple. And for proper optimization, one should actually be able to understand that surface. And then that forms a basis for optimization. In the rest of these slides, I've mostly talked about. So again, this was intended to be a short 